Now we're going to talk about data mining. Um, it's it's not a big part of the the uh, the uh, curriculum, so uh, this video will be quite short. But there are some things you should know about uh, automated model selection and data mining. For example, um, you have some some tools for for model selection. Um, and and for example, some some of these some some of these uh, are used. Uh, well, when you have um, many axes, okay. If you have a lot of variables, maybe hundreds uh, of variables, or maybe maybe more, um, it's it's difficult to to uh, to uh, differ them. Often, it's it's really difficult to differ them uh, from each other, um, and you will get a lot of um, um, low t values, for example. Uh, and what what uh, uh, these uh, these reg regression and and lasso does they they kind of shrink the 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 uh, the uh, slopes uh, to towards zero and and they kind of um, uh, pe penalize the 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 lesser important uh, uh, variables. Uh, with a lower slope, okay. Uh, so you are supposed to to only keep those variables uh, which which are the most uh, important. Uh, whereas principal component analysis, uh, it actually uh, uh, creates uh, new new variables, uh, so-called factors, uh, which uh, which explain uh your your data your y variable and uh, often um uh, if if you have a lot of if you have a lot of um uh, uh variables which are co-moving then uh the principal component analysis will 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 uh make new factors which uh of which only a few factors will be able to explain a lot of the variation in your y variable. Okay, uh, but and and you can also use a stepwise regression. Um, but but there is a problem with with uh, just uh, pouring on um, uh, a lot of uh, a lot of data and try to. Uh, to to get some some insight from that. Um, so, for example, uh, if if you're data mining, you're you're just uh, running a regression uh, of a lot of x variables, and and you're looking for for a significant explanatory variable, then then you r run the risk of of, of overfitting, uh, which is that that you can explain uh, the 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 movement in the y variable with all these uh, x variables, but uh, if if you look into the future, then uh, then uh, the model does not do very well. It it, it does not forecast very well. Um, so so you might have high false discovery rates. Okay, which means that that you find some significant uh, variables, but uh, they uh, they are are spu spuriously uh, significant. Which means that um, it, they were significant by by chance. Okay, and so so <clears throat> often these uh, these variables which are significant. Uh, but contribute to o overfitting. They they uh, they are not uh, they they are not based on common sense. Okay, so so if if you're data mining, 
then then uh, you have to check your results okay for for logic and common sense and um, some some solutions um, to to this problem with with over overfitting from data mining is is to split uh, the the data set into into a a, a uh, training set um, let's see uh, da -da -da -da. into a training set uh, and a test set and in addition you can you you can kind of cross validate your 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 um, your model uh, in which you you partition your 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 training set in a way that um, uh, you you uh, kind of um, uh, partition your your data into several different uh, partitions and run your regression on each of those okay so for example this is the the market change and uh, this is time so you see that that the 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 market it it varies right uh, sometimes you have uh, like a positive return sometimes negative and um, what if you you just made like a random random uh, sequence of numbers okay um, and and here you have this random one it's let's see I can make that better random one it's it's generated uh, by generate uh, random one which should be equal to a a pick from a random random normal distribution okay uh, with with mean zero and and variance one uh, so so what if what if you just create a lot of these random number sequences okay so for example if you if you make 25 of these random variables um you can uh let's see if you want to uh you just say set seed and this is from the uh, the uh the, this example is from the uh wor worksheet okay so so you have the code so you set seed so that uh your random number generator will uh get the same result as you see here and you just create uh, like uh, a new variable generate random one which should be equal to a uh, random normal okay and if you do this 25 times random 2 which also is a random normal and if you do this until you say generate random 25 which equals to random normal and uh, in, instead of writing this 25 times you can make a for loop uh, you, you just say um, okay 
uh, then you would write for uh, four values one two twenty five do what is between these brackets and then you generate um, a random with name i which is a number equals our normal okay so so this the, this for loop will um, will generate 25 different uh, uh, variables uh, which are uh, random normal uh, drawings from a, a, a normal di distribution uh, with with um, mean zero and variance one. Okay, and then you can regress <coughs> um, the market change on uh, these these random uh, variables. So now market change is the y variable, and uh, here would be the twenty five twenty five x. variables okay and and what you see is that uh, you have you have uh, a very high um, uh, p-value for for the F which says that well you didn't really um, uh, explain much with these uh, random random uh, numbers um, but what you do see is that you have here you have one random number sequence which which was actually uh, significant so so here you had a t value of 2.34 uh, which is significantly different from zero at the two percent level, even though it's it's a, a uh, random number sequence. So if you if you make a regression, a simple regression <coughs> of the the market change, which is y, on that random twenty one, okay, because it was random 21 and what was the sequence which actually turned out to be significant in explaining uh, some of the variation in in, in the market um, and what we have here is that that the 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 uh, the uh, regression the the simple regression uh, is actually significant on the 10% level uh, with a uh, p-value p for the F test at 6.69% and what what you also see is that um, the the p-value for the for the uh, slope on this uh, random number sequence is uh, significant on the 10% level so so does that mean that this model is is great uh, probably not because uh, as this is just a random sequence of numbers we probably were lucky to to have a sequence which which could explain some of the variation in our in in in, in our market uh, uh, price changes, so so probably um, we would not be able to to use this uh, random number sequence to to uh, to any success at a at a later stage with with new data from from the market variable. Okay, so um, even. Even random numbers can sometimes 
uh, give you a, a, a significant result. Uh, so always check the, the F statistic be before interpreting the, the regression results, because as you saw here, uh, you get uh, a very poor result for the F test, but one of the, the T tests were actually significant. Okay, so always check the, the F statistic and always be suspicious of, of, of models where explanatory variables um, are, are really special and, and not according to, to uh, theory. Okay, so uh, because uh, your results need to make sense. Okay, they, 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 they have to be logical. Okay, so so nobody cares about um, the size of the t statistic uh, if if the the uh, the the logical connection between the y variable and the x variable is not there. Okay, uh, so uh, what what data mining can help you with is is to find logical connections, but often they will give you junk. Uh, and and you have to just logically test these connections like should this x variable actually have an impact on the y variable uh, and often the the answer is no but sometimes it's yes and then you can include that variable into the model and that's why you really have to know something about finance and economics okay so so that's one of the reasons why why you need to know these uh, these uh, things okay so so that's it see you next time